the Center for Human Systems, welcomes you to its Leadership and Self-Mastery program. This is the first module choice of the first course, Conscious Use of Self. Welcome to the Leadership and Self-Mastery program. This series is for leaders at all levels, formal and informal, to master the behaviors, practices, and disciplines of leadership. This program has nine courses with one or more modules per course. The format of each of these modules is a mini lecture followed by a learn along activity. In this first course, we'll be focusing on the foundational principle, conscious use of self, the path to self-mastery. In this particular module, we're going to be talking about choice. Michael, hello. Hello, Ronnie. How are you today? I am great. Why don't you tell me what the big idea of today's course is? The big idea today is that mastery of self is critical for successfully leading others. And conscious use of self is the foundational tool for leading oneself. May I define that for you? Please do. Okay. I'm going to do this in three steps. We're going to talk about first, what is just, just plain use of self? Then we're going to talk about automatic use of self. And then we're going to talk about conscious use of self. Use of self is what we do every day, day in and day out. It's the way we use our intellectual, emotional, and physical energy from moment to moment, on automatic or consciously, for better or for worse. Got it? I think so. So let me try to restate this in my own words. Um, so use of self, the way you've defined it, is about the way that I think, I feel, what I do, or how I move in the world. Is that right? Yes. For, for just plain use of self. It's help, helpful to understand that before we get into automatic uh, and conscious use of self. So how is this different from just how I am in the world, how I work, react to the world or the situations around me? Mm -hmm. It's more than simply reactions. It's actually about how we actually choose to behave, think, and believe. So it's how we, we act as well as react in the world and also how we impact the world in all phases of our lives. Let me define automatic use of self. It's how we use ourselves automatically with little or no thought. It works fine most, most of the time to get us through a day. Uh, and, but then sometimes it doesn't work quite so well. For example, one evening I wanted to warm up some leftovers in the microwave. So I put them in and went to do something else. When I went to get them out, they were gone. I, 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 I was puzzled. I, I knew I had put them in. It took me a few minutes to check in the toaster oven where that's where they were, stone cold. That happened because I used my toaster often so often that going there had become automatic regardless of my intention to use my microwave. Okay, so I think I get that. I mean, I have done this too. You know, for example, I moved recently. So I found myself driving home and taking that old exit off the freeway when I really wanted the new exit to go to my new home. And that kind of was like my automatic behavior, automatic reaction. I wasn't thinking, I was just driving, I was zoning out. So this automatic behavior sounds like habits, but habits aren't necessarily bad, Michael. I mean, they save us mental effort and energy, so we don't have to think about everything all the time. So when is this automatic use of self that you talk about, when is that bad? Well, bad isn't quite the word that I would use. However, there are times when being on automatic produces either ineffective or undesirable consequences. And, and, and as a leader, we need to be on top of that. Okay, so I won't use the word bad. So Good. let me let me ask the question a different way. How do you know when we should how do we know when we should pay attention to this automatic habit or this 
unconscious use of self to use the language that you're using? Sure. We would know when we're not getting, getting the results that we want. I looked into the, the microwave and they weren't there. I, was, I did not get the result I wanted. You took an exit that was not the result that you wanted. So here's a corporate type of an example. I've worked with, I've worked this issue with several folks who have been newly appointed to their companies C-suite where they were now peers with their former boss and other vice presidents. I'll focus on one in particular. Jason had been the vice president of the newly created marketing department for all of a week when he shared that at an executive staff meeting, the need for better communication between the accounting and sales department since it was impacting his role as head of the, the, the new marketing department. Each vice president in charge of those areas blamed, blamed each other for, for the problem. The conversation simply ended when somebody brought up a different problem. The meeting ended with this issue unresolved. He shared what happened to me. I asked him why he didn't speak up. He thought about it and said he really didn't know. But then he said, you know, in my previous role, I was used to sharing my opinion in front of all these vice presidents, but I would wait for my boss to do any fighting for for some idea with needed. Jason and his boss had worked that way for several years. Jason needed to get off of this automatic habit of waiting for someone to back him up. That habit was no longer useful to him in his new role. Hmm. I mean, that's a really interesting example because I think we've all been there where we have been promoted to a new role and all of a sudden we're to act or behave in a different way and we kind of keep looking for the person behind us or, or falling back into our own old patterns or habits so that's a huge behavioral change for jason to have gone through i mean was it enough for him to just notice that he was doing this certainly noticing is the very first step being aware of how we get in our own way The next step is to actually do something different, to change our behavior, which can be easier said than done. Actually, throughout this entire program, we'll be covering very effective ways to do that. Okay. So how did he even begin? You know, give us a hint. How did he even begin to change this automatic behavior of his? Well, uh, working with me, he, he began to really become aware of a, of a range of choices that he had not recognized before. Intentionally and deliberately choosing how to use, use our energy to accomplish our goals. It is most useful when we wish to improve the human systems of which, of which we are a part. Okay. So let me make sure I got this because this is important, right? So conscious use of self is about being aware or conscious of how we use our energy to accomplish goals and then modifying what we're doing if we're not getting the results that we need. Is that right? That's exactly what I'm talking. You got it. So let's, let's keep going with an example. Can you provide an example of how that works in real life? Well, let's go back to, to the story of Jason. I met with Jason the following week and asked him how he, he was doing at, at his executive staff meetings. He, he said that his automatic tendency to want to defer was still there, but now he could catch it after a moment or two so that he could defend his own ideas rather than waiting for someone to to do that for him. So it, it, it isn't that he stopped altogether, but now he can catch himself. Then make it, well, once he is aware 
of, of what he's doing is not working, he can go, oh, that's that old habit. Now, let me do what I know will work better. Okay. So he accomplished his uh, sort of his goals or his change in behavior by becoming more conscious or more mindful of his behaviors and then just began that process of changing them. Um, I'm assuming that he had your coaching to help him along. That's correct. Okay. So um, this actually brings up a question for me. What is the difference between conscious use of self and mindfulness? Good question. Mindfulness is a very important technique for becoming aware of ourselves in the moment. It's so easy to get caught up in the busyness of life that we, that we cannot notice how stressed stress we are or that we've even become ineffective. On automatic, we will tend, when things aren't working, we want to blame somebody. Either blaming, blame ourselves or blame somebody else. Neither one of those is really very useful. So to get off of automatic, to become conscious and to make more intentional and deliberate choices is what this is all about. So mindful is one way to get to a more conscious self and thus more consciously be able to use ourselves. Is that correct? That's right. You know, there, there, there's also a, a simple exercise that people can use to, to begin to notice when they're on o -o automatic. For example, I make a point of brushing my teeth in a different way every morning. Just become mindful. Or uh, choose to uh, tie your shoes uh, left to right rather than right to left. Dress differently. So, so just routine things that don't matter. Notice how you're doing things automatic and just change it up just to become more mindful so that you can notice when you're on automatic and then can choose to change or not change depending upon the situation. Right. Um, these are all great ideas and tips for becoming more um, autom conscious of your automatic behaviors. But to be perfectly honest, I will not be brushing my teeth in a different way because it will make me think of the dentist. And I don't like the dentist. So I'm not going to do that, Michael. <laughs> that's you just being on automatic. That's all. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll leave you alone. Okay. Thank you. So what can, what about things like, so what I prefer to do is like a yoga practice because one holds a tightness in the body a lot. And if I'm in emotions come from the body, you know, from everything that I've experienced and read. And so if I do yoga every morning, this kind of brings a certain consciousness to who I am in the world. Is that some, a habit that, that works? That works for me. Sounds perfect. Sounds perfect. Anything that puts you back in touch with yourself in the moment. Deep breathing exercises. Being conscious of one's breathing in and out. Meditation. All of those things, yes. Yeah. This is the end of part one of this module. Please continue on to part two for an exercise where you can follow along step by step to apply the concepts covered for yourself. Pause the recording if you need more time at any point. For questions you would ask, like to ask me, Dr. Broom, or comments you want to share, use the forum, but watch the exercise first.